her up a little bit. Come on her a bit higher. So I was at the dump one day and uh, this guy was throwing out all this uh, stucco lath, pretty expensive, but it makes perfect collars around trees. And still deciding if I'm gonna lop the top. All right, I'm doing a little bit of a night shift here. I'm just digging into the ground here. Gonna set some containers uh, a bit deeper just so they take longer to dry out. A little bit of good soil on the bottom now. So the bottoms are cut open. Take those little ones off like that. Celery likes a good hit of nitrogen as well. So that's what will grow the really lush stalks. Lots and lots of water. You don't ever want to let them dry out. And some extra nitrogen is always appreciated. A lot of the more newer varieties are like Tango are considered like self blanching, uh, which you don't really need to mound them or hill them. But you just want to plant them close enough that they do kind of help with the blanching so that they get shaded a little bit. Also holding the outer leaves up with that rubber band is supposed to help. I haven't tried that. I'm gonna try that this year though. They like a little bit cooler weather ideally, so they need a little bit of shade just so they stay cool enough. So I'm just gonna leave these in the shade for a couple more hours before I move them into place. And I got all the celery in the night before last. I have a row of broccoli here. It's been about 10 days. Planting all these cherry tomatoes along the fence line here. Going to interplant them with some sweet basil and sow some tender long carrots.
harvest your overwintered carrots before they start regrowing their tops. Otherwise, they're going to be fairly woody and not very sweet. I think I'll leave some on the end here to flower and make beautiful flowers, attract beneficial pollinators. These lettuce are a little past prime for transplanting, but still give them a go. So I decided to use some in the garden here, and to me it's equally as valuable as culture or a bed border. I think it looks really beautiful. It's gonna give me a little bit more space in the back here. It's gonna fill that in and uh, plant some lettuce back here, maybe something else. quite a bit of work already. I'm just gonna take a little break from my potato bed there. I um, found potatoes I'm gonna plant and I was just watering my fava beans here. This was some of my saved seed. The germination was awesome and uh, they were, it looked like they were about to fall so now I can turn the sprinkler back on.
right, that's it for now. I'm gonna let these guys show their tips before I go ahead and put some of the straw mulch on them. And then underneath the straw, I have a bunch of weeds that are decomposing, uh, mixed with a bunch of wood chips actually. And so that'll go on last. This is good because all my blueberries are getting lots of water now. And I just popped in a whole bunch of strawberries in between the tulips there. They have fruit on them actually. And zinnias in there, so it's good everything is getting watered down. Put a couple sun gold tomato plants in between my blueberries, just two. See how they do. I have so many extra tomatoes that uh, I figured the cherry tomatoes might work pretty well. Like I grew squash on these blueberries last year and it was just totally amazing. Tomatoes will be a little bit lighter than the squash, which will be good and not quite so much foliage. I think that'll work out pretty well since their blueberries aren't really gonna fruit hardly at all this year. Might as well use them as a light trellisine. They are taking a break from uh, fruiting for the most part. There's a couple on there, but it's kind of what I figured since I let them crop out last year and the autumn before last is when I put all of these in here. These were big transplants. They set their buds in the autumn for fruit the next spring. These ones cropped out and they're cropping again, but it's a little bit puzzling because the, the color is so limey still. Same last year, same thing, um, but it doesn't seem to want to affect their, their crop for this year. I mean, it's just chock full. All right, so got everything planted out here in this greenhouse. And that's a brand new bed this year. A couple varieties of peppers there. Sweet basil and two varieties of watermelon, crimson sweet and sugar baby. And my idea is that they're going to, uh, I'm gonna put some fencing in here and they're gonna climb up and then I'm going to put some more strapping and or fencing and they're going to just grow up this shelter here and they will shade out my cucumbers a little bit that's why i just planted these a little bit more spaced than i often do the basil will be fine with a little bit of shade and i'll be harvesting them I'm not sure how long these guys will go actually because they are starting to flower a bit so i'm just going to wait so they really perk up and then i'm going to come in and do a harvest like half of them probably down to there and then they should regrow yeah so i've got suyo long cucumber and this is such a great variety because it doesn't get bitter in the heat supposedly it doesn't actually carry the bitter gene we're already making some fruits here got this composting pathway in here kitchen scraps a bunch of carrot tops a bit of manure and wood chips and straw so filled it up pretty good that's quite a deep trench there that's gonna hold moisture and all the worms are gonna come up and really love that and start decomposing it and the roots are gonna grow down into this mass of you know moisture and decomposing uh, scraps and earthworms Check out this beautiful volunteer companion planting polyculture bed here. I planted peppers in here. It's the only thing that I've planted, but there's sweet pea and all these lettuces and cilantro. I had a salad out of here last night too. Just gonna pick a few more. So it's all self-seeded. Look at that beauty. Oh, and I did plant a few beans in here as well too. With some self-seeded chamomile. looking really good out here. San Marzano tomatoes. New potatoes are up. These cukes are looking good. They're starting to vine out. Beans, cabbage. Onions are doing okay. Pretty good here. Some of my other ones are still affected by the thrip, I think. It was crucial to cut them low enough so that I uh, got all the thrips off. Corn is just looking fantastic. Look at that fatness of some of these this is who gets kissed so far just amazing for mid-june these are looking incredible snow bell is flowering so gorgeous broccolis are looking real good 
volunteer potatoes have taken over the spot, but they look so big and healthy, I might leave them. Garlic here. That's what I came over to do, actually, is these scapes are perfect. I like when they are a little bit young like that, like pretty small, tender. Our food process them up and throw them in the freezer. And uh, really awesome fresh garlic for using at your fingertips. Escape butter. All my corn is rocking. Just put some more manure on these two beds. Just have to finish that bed there. Should be thinning them out really soon here. Potatoes are filling in to be a whole row. Oh, I was thinking that the corn was probably gonna be dominant, but looks like the potatoes are now. This is going to be a watermelon tower. I have crimson sweet and sugar baby. Bunch of homemade compost. So I'm really treating these beauties wonderfully. Maybe you was written in the stars. Written in the stars. You me I need 